Amen. I want to say greetings to our friends viewing us on the internet, wherever you are, whether on YouTube or Facebook Live. Welcome to our Sunday morning session. And we've been talking this morning about something that's very important. The body of Christ should know it. I'm not sure they do. As, not, as a matter of fact, everybody should know it. We take it as a text, if you please turn with me about this at home. We take it as a text, the book of John, chapter 11. And we're talking about a situation where Lazarus died. And Jesus eventually came, he took his own time, and eventually got there. And verse 21 is, Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. You, you know what she's saying. She's angry. And she has every right to be. Because she knew he could heal the sick. Yes. And then she has allowed the boy to die. Mm -hmm. So she's blaming him. She said, You God this. <laughs> you ever blame God? <laughs> Never felt that he could have come to you. Know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You understand? Yes. God, you allow this to happen. Yes. But here she said. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou will ask of God, God will give thee. Now, here, here, here is funny. This is church talk. Say church talk. Church talk. How do I know it's church talk? Because what's going to follow? And she said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Amen. Thy brother shall rise again. Again. again, hallelujah. Now, you know what's funny? She determined when, when is again. <laughs> and the Lord said to me, that's, that's what the mistake we make very often. We determine when is again. You see, we think we can determine when is again. Thy brother shall rise again. Hear her response. She said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Look at somebody and say, you don't determine the day. <laughs> the day is not left to you to determine. Yeah, it, at the last day, in other words, not now. Now that, you, you know what? You see that not now thing yeah. has left the church in a state that should not have been in. Because you were taught that it will happen, but not now. We, we, one of these days we'll walk on the streets of gold, but yes, not right. now. Right. Even though the Bible says, in this life you shall have houses right. and families and all those who have those things. In this life and the life to come, but we still, we're stuck on it because somebody told us in the sweet by and by. Yes. When we all get to heaven, but a day of rejoicing, that's going to be. And so that's our doctrine, that's what we live by. So nobody wants to know and know in the street. In the street, by and by. <laughs> she said, yeah, I know, in the street, by and by. So that's what she said. Was it the truth? As we need to do the scripture. What she's stating a fact. Do you know, rather than saying what you said, you know that's what we still say? Oh in the resurrection? Yes. Everybody is saying that? Yes. We'll live forever in the resurrection. One is, we, we, we sing the song, the same right. spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me. He shall quicken my mortal body, but right. guess what? In the resurrection. Yeah. In the resurrection, who told you it's in the resurrection? In the resurrection that you were talking about. She said, I know you shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. When, when the last day. In other words, at the last day. Not now. Well, God sent me to tell you it's now. Hallelujah! Tell somebody, it's right now. Right now. Your prosperity is right now. Right now. Your health is right now. Right now. Right now. I said right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Now, how do I know this, this doctrine is correct? Well, the Bible, let's read the scripture. You said unto her, I am the resurrection. 
and the light. No, she said, in the resurrection. He said, I'm the resurrection. The resurrection is here. Who's the resurrection is here? The resurrection is here. He said, I am the resurrection. In other words, if Jesus is here, the resurrection is here. Resurrection power is present. Yes, sir. He said, I am. I am. And I always say something's better. He said, I am with you. I is the resurrection. He said, I am. Nice. So he said, I is this. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. No, no, listen to me. This is what I'm going to show you. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. You ready for the next statement? And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Hold on, so hold on, hold on. Let, let's understand what you're saying. Whoever he that believes in me, though you were dead. Yes, so we have hope for our relatives who yeah, yeah. passed on, who transitioned. Yeah. And we know that one of these days, Paul says, Show your mystery, we shall not all see. Yeah. We shall not all see. See, so we shall not all see. Now, now some folk will sleep. Yes, yes. But we shall not all sleep. All no, you, you, you need to know we shall not all sleep. Yes, yes. All you know, sleep is up to you. Amen. You don't have to sleep, but uh -huh. wow. you can choose to sleep. Yes, okay. yes. You see, you can choose to sleep. Yes, but what we shall not, we shall be changed. Okay. And then more to say, but only more talent in the twinkle of the light. The trumpet shall sound. So some people are waiting on the trumpet for their change. So they want to sleep and then to be awoken. But some people could, some people choose to be here. Yes, sir. All right. All right. No. In other words, our relatives who passed on, we have hope they'll come again. The Lord's Bible said you will bring them with him. So if you're wondering what happened to your relative who trans transitioned, listen, the Lord shall bring them with him. And he shall give them new bodies. I couldn't understand it, I began to look at the thing scientifically. You know, you know that matter of discourse is energy. It can't be created, it can't be destroyed. So the Lord is able to raise it back up. You understand? He's able to bring back bodies and give them. So these departed souls, he's going to give them bodies. Well, let's see who is here. He's going to make another statement. I wish you ever live it and believe it. In me. Now, now let me ask you a question. Are you alive? Do you believe in him? Yes. Shall never die. Now what preacher said when he was calling, he was saying you can't die but you can sleep. He wasn't saying that. How do I know? Because she said in the resurrection, and that's what it told us in the resurrection at the last day. Yes. But Jesus raised Lazarus right then. Yes, sir. Right there, right there. Right there, right there. Shall never die. But then he, he's asking the question, believe us thou this? Can you believe? Yes, yes, yes. Now, hear church talk again. He said, yeah, no, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of, of God, which should come into the world. This is what the Lord arrested me with. He said, listen, lots of you believe that Jesus is God. And they do well to believe that. They believe he's the Son of God, and they do well. They believe he rose from the dead, and they do well. But guess what? The church was not taught to believe. They were not taught to believe the promises of God. Yes, 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 yes. So we were not taught that you can live forever now. Yes. We were, we, no, nobody taught you that. They told us that we have to go the, the way of the world. And so everybody's supposed to that. And guess what's the favorite scripture? It's appointed unto men. Even though she said you passed from death. He said, I come that you may have death. Life. And have it more abundantly. The thief coming to kill, till this destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it more. Now that does not preach. You see, it was yes, not. Yes. It, so our paradigm, our paradigm is that we, we live expecting death. Yes. Oh, very, very much so. As a result of that, now, watch what's funny. 
The world is looking for a way because the scientists they are convinced that the human beings were not supposed to die. That's right, that's right. That's right. And they are looking for a way to extend life yes. and to have longevity. And the scripture has it inside and we are not looking at it. He said, Jesus, whosoever believeth him shall not never die. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible says. As if the same spirit raised Christ from the dead dwells in us, he shall quicken, he shall give life to a mortal body. In other words, he shall rejuvenate it. No, no, they, they show you that at the, you, you, the, the, at the end of your genes, there's something called the telomeres. And uh, it, it short it keeps shortening and shortening and shortening, and eventually you have death. But they don't understand that the, the scientists also discovered something. They discovered like you have the placebo, you have the placebo. If that means because you think that way, the father had the son supposed to have it. Excuse me. And let me put it this way: your genes is like stuff in your pantry or goods in your pantry. But the cook has to cook it before you can get that. There's everything in the pantry to make fried rice. But you don't have to cook fried rice. You can cook spice. that? What you think? You have to die. die. That's what the Bible says. The church said he was just talking about you should not experience clinical death all because only the sinners die. Jesus said with Lazarus, Lazarus is dead. And the soul he was talking in the same context, he was using that to re represent them. Don't come and bring no other funny philosophy to me and, and doctrine. Jesus said Lazarus was dead. And he said he shall live again. No one was dead, he was dead before. If Jesus is able to raise Lazarus, which by now he still gets according to him, raise him from the dead. Which one is easier to raise a stink corpse to from the dead or to keep you alive? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Which is easier? Maintain life. To maintain life. He said that believers shall never die. You believe all sorts of things with Jesus and beloved doesn't do well. But God wants us to what God wants us to believe, nobody tells us to believe. The, the people who came wanted to steal over whatever we had in the colonies or whatever. And so they told you that, you know. You know why the church is poor and broke? And I'm talking with in presenting. Because they told us. But when you go to heaven, you'll get heaven. Yes. So until then, rest yourself. Because if you have this stuff, they'll keep you from heaven. They preached, they told us, the rich man, Abraham and the rich man. They put the rich man in Lazarus, rather. But they made a mistake, you see. They made me able to read. They taught me to read. And when they read the man, when Lazarus was in Abraham's bosom, and the same Bible says Abraham was very rich. Yeah. Something is not adding up. Yeah. Therefore, it was not money that sent the rich man to hell. That's right. Or Abraham had to be in hell. Yes. Because, you see, Solomon was rich and they could have explained and said what kind of riches he had. They could not even explain Abraham's rich wealth. Very rich. A man who had his private army. 300 men, fighting men, born in his house. He has a private army. Fighting men. To have fighting men, you have to train them like an army. Yes. You have to recruit them. You have, yes. There is one recruit training program. Mm -hmm. So they were fighting men. They were not just. You see, you saw the movie 300. The guy said, How many men you have? He said, 300. He said, So few. Mm -hmm. How many you have? He said, We have many thousand. You enter, he said, what you are, Mr. Carpenter. What you are, teacher, what you are. Fine. You went to me, say, we are going to be here. Oh, oh, what? 
All 300 warriors. So Abraham had 300 men. That's all they did. They did 318. Listen. They didn't clean stalls. All they did all day long. They would have been gardeners and gardeners. Of course. Yeah, these were fighting men. All day they trained. Warriors. Don't say how rich he was. And yet, that's just in his, in his bosom. Yes. And these preachers told us that if you're rich, you're going to. They preached us poor. They taught us to be poor. And as soon as you mention about money, you turn the radio off. So, you hear these preachers? The press having a heyday and, and trying to say, these, these wealthy preachers, of course they're supposed to be wealthy. Yeah. Some little, some little guy sings some rap song and he can fly his own jet. A golf player can have his own, has his own jet. And somebody was taking the word of God, the most precious yes. thing that he yeah. can save his soul. If he has a jet, the press think is their duty. Not only, I don't worry about the press, you know. The press was always there, they always have to be there. Guess what troubles me? Is uninformed ministers who give the press ammunition. So we were not taught to believe right. Jesus said, I'm the bread from coming from heaven. Your father ate manna in the wilderness and he died. And I said, He said, Whoever eat of me shall never die. Now today we will partake of the Lord's body. How many of you believe that when you partake of the Lord's body, you shall never die? It's not, you see, you think God is glorified because we just praise Him and worship Him and we bow down. No. God wants you to believe in it. Let me drop something at you. You want to real sin in the church? The real sin is not drinking and smoking and sex. That's not the real sin. The real sin is on yes, the The children of Israel left out from the promised land because oh, God said they had an evil heart oh, of unbelief. They refused to believe in God. Yes. And a generation will be left out of the kingdom because they cannot believe God. Paul, the Apostle Paul, in Corinthians, when he was writing to the Corinthians, the trouble some church. He said, you know what, some of you are sick. And some of you are feeble and weak and some die. Because you don't discern the Lord's word. You don't understand to discern the Lord's I said, study it to understand what it is. And because you don't understand and have the essence, you possess the essence of what the Lord's word is about. That's why you die. But the mere fact, he said, that's why you're sick. And we can some of you die. In other words, Paul was saying, it's not supposed to happen. That's right. If you disorder the Lord's body, that's you're not right. supposed to be sick. Yes. 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 You're not supposed to be weak, sick, or dead. That's right. <laughs> now, let me tell you, your body didn't get in the memo yet. Getting his spirit. It's his spirit of the flesh of the body. Let his spirit get in the memo. See, because in your flesh, you're still thinking, oh, pardon is You must get sick sometime. It's not true. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. I used to believe yes. so. Yes. But when I decided to believe the word of God, let me tell you something. I have not had... I don't want to use the word. I don't want to use that word. Any reason... To see a physician in the last 40 years. Oh, hallelujah! Glory to God! Glory to God! In the last 40 years. Glory to God! The word of God is true. My brothers can tell you I used to be considered a cool subject. If the sprays get me, I expect a fever, I expect. 
I can walk in the rain and we go. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. The rain can wet me. Yes. It can dry back on me. Mm -hmm. I'm break. I have had no reason to take even I used to buy coal, Advil coal and coal and sinus by the boxes. In the last five years, I never had any reason to take any Advil. I was telling my brother, I can go in the bathtub, fill it up with ice and water, and then go in and, and lie down. Glory to God. Without hypothermia, and come out and feel good. Yes. Praise God. See, they lie to us. And many things happen to you because you believe so. Jesus, she asked, he asked the question, believe you be the old face? She said, I believe you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. He was asking her, you believe your brother shall rise? You believe your brother shall rise now? I believe he's the Christ. And that's really the stuff. And that's what church is full of. Where is the star? He is Lord. He is, he is risen from the dead. The Bible says, if he raised, we shall rise also. Amen. But in the same spirit well, that raised him from the dead dwells in us. He shall quicken, otherwise we don't have to die. Not discerning the Lord's body. The moment the issue of blood is on the Lord's body. Yes. She said, look at somebody and say, it's based on what you say. It's based on what you say. She said in her heart, yes. if I talk to him of his God, yes. I shall be made whole. The day you will say, when I eat of the body of the Lord, I love you whole. Yes. I'm going to live forever. Yes. Yes. Every cell in my body will be helped. Yes. The day you say that, That's funny. We consecrate the bread, the elements, to be the body of Christ. And guess what happens? After one year, it don't go sour. When we consecrate it, you can leave it for a year. Measure it back. I wish we had. Nothing goes wrong with it. It gets hard. That's all. You buy the other bread in the, in the shop. After a couple of days, it's sour. When we consecrate this one, the bread is smarter than us. When we say it's going to be the body of Christ, all those cells inside turn at all work. And we're not saying that when I partake of this. So we partake of it and then two minutes after we go and say, you know, I have this condition. But you still have the condition. Guess what? Because you don't believe. The woman said, if I touch the woman's garment, I should be able She That's what she said. If I touch the woman's garment. No. No, we have a chance to touch the eat of him. Yes. He said, eat of me and you shall live. You see now, look, many persons are like the Corinthian church. To them, it was just a meal. If it's a meal, then you have a meal. The church said, religion again. You're unworthy to take it. You can't be a part of it. You were divorced. They said you got channels of wedlock, all kind of ignorance. You can't, you're not eligible. People telling you to sit down. Let me tell you, you see these foolish people. They didn't read the Bible. So this Edith Club in church, only those whose lives I thank you. That's why they still sick. And they die. So the right life right is be good. You can live forever. All you have to do is to believe it. Just think it to be so. To imagine that when you partake of this, the very life of Christ, 
comes inside of you. Every cell is changed. I like to listen to the guy Dr. Bruce Lipton. Very brilliant doctor. And he said that they, they, they took one cell, divided it in three. And just changed the environment in the petri dish. One became bone, one became tissue, one became muscle. And he discovered what is the environment? The environment is caused by our thinking. See, whatever we think determines how the situation in your body changes. If you think that you have to expire, if you think that you're getting old and you're getting down, that thought creates the environment in your body for that to happen. On the other hand, if you think that I, my youth is being renewed, when I partake of the body of Christ, my cells are being rejuvenated, my calories is getting longer, guess what happens? Just that happens. See, the moment you believe it, this, this is what happens to you. Now, we have an opportunity to make this thing work. Now, the Lord told me to warn you. You know, some people say, well, all the other churches, but let me tell you something. They had a church in the wilderness at Grace called Kaddish Farm. <laughs> and only two persons in the church <laughs> believed the Lord. The rest of the church. 603,000. Consistent of the equilibrium. Equilibrium. The graveyard comes. You see that? Joshua and Caleb alone said what God was saying. So I'm not afraid to say what God is saying. Amen. And what the Bible is saying. Amen. You see, you, you can think, well, how come all the other churches? I'm, worried, I'm saying what the Bible is saying. That's what you said. That's simple English. Who's ever living? Your life. Amen. Your life. Amen. That means you. And believe that in me. Shall never die. Then you start believing it. Something changes. Then he bent down and said, Whoever eat of him shall never die. As most of you read, they probably served with the wilderness, so shall the son of man be little. Whosoever looks shall live. Those venomous snakes bit those people in the wilderness. You say, take the Bible literally. I am so stupid. I'm not, actually, I'm not very bright. I have three doctorates in stupidity. <laughs> Divinely stupid. I choose to believe the Bible. <laughs> and I believe them, them servants bit them. They came and they looked. Thank God, Moses didn't ask them, where have you been in the shop? What were you doing at the point in time? God said, who's ever looked shall live. Hallelujah. You see that? Yes. So if, regardless of what the man was doing, yes, sir. if he was in a serpent pit, and he got bitten, just had to come and look. That's right. And he knew. And he knew. Don't think of it. Serpent injected venom in his vein. And he's looking. And a change is taking place in his body. Yes. Oh my God. Oh my God. The body of Christ, man, and something will happen. Every time you partake of the body of Christ, something is supposed to happen inside you, man. From this day forward, take it. And every time I partake of his body, new life is coming into my body. Amen. Our oh, friends on the internet, go get some bread, get some. Why we are consecrated to become the body of Christ when we speak over it. And you will join us to be part of the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please understand this. It don't matter if you live home in a common law relationship. I don't care what you do. 
if you dread it, you got the family. You know, as long as you believe that Jesus Christ died for you and believe he's the same with the world, you are eligible to party. Amen. And you want to step into the life, you better your teeth for your dread, you have a crown on your head. He died for one and all. No, he didn't die for everybody, he died for For those who believe, those who cease to believe. Father, we thank you for these elements. We thank you for this. For these rolls and this wine. And we sanctify them now to be the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And by faith we approach and receive of his body. And by faith we understand and that when we partake of his body, that our selves. Receive new life. Yes, sir. Our cells are quickened. Amen. Shall never boost our cartel ever yet. That new life comes into us. We thank you. Amen. Amen. Now the ushers will direct you to come and receive of your body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you we'll wait and we'll partake together. So allow the ushers to direct you to come to the table of the Lord and receive the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, also, you need to direct the people which glasses are for what, you know. Yeah. The ministers will take the long glasses. In the meantime, somebody's going to sing. He was made to the cross for me. He was made to the cross on the cross crucified. On the cross crucified for me he died. For me he died. He was made to the cross for me. He was wounded for my transgression. He was Yeah. 
I hope our friends on the internet did partake of the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. You know, beloved. Live forever. Amen. 